Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani and welcome back to this series on the glossary of handbook, a dictionary of all the terminology that you run into when you're learning about narcissism or narcissistic relationships. I put this series together because these terms are always floating out there, but not everyone is always clear on what they mean. This series is meant to bring some clarity onto these terms and hopefully not only enlighten and inform you, but hopefully even give you techniques for understanding what to do when you're in the face of this. Today, the term we're going to take on is projection. Before you keep going, I'm always going to ask you if you're enjoying this content or want to know more about this, please hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications and to subscribe to this channel to get ongoing notifications about the many videos we post, I guess it is post, on a weekly basis. So let's talk about projection. You look at your partner strangely when he or she accuses you of lying and manipulation. You're a person who's fully aware of your own character flaws, but lying and manipulation are just not things that you do. In fact, you chuckle to yourself, eh, maybe in a sort of bleak way, but you do chuckle to yourself and reflect on how bizarre it is that they are accusing you of the very thing that they do. They may accuse you, the narcissist in your life, of lots of odd things, accusing you of being angry when you're not, saying that they think you feel disappointed about something when you're actually fine with it. You may actually think right now, and I'm sure you do, think that I'm describing gaslighting. But the accusation of something out of, the out of the blue that is patently untrue is in fact a primitive defense that is called projection. And yeah, there's some gaslighting in there, but it's projection. So let's work backwards a little bit. I'm going to be a little professor for a minute and start with what exactly is a defense. We all have defenses. They protect our ego and they're designed to keep that uncomfortable and unacceptable and even threatening unconscious stuff under wraps. Freud and his contemporaries introduced this framework of defenses as sort of being these sort of psychological screens and sort of halls of mirrors that kind of twist things to protect our primitive stuff. The fact is that all of us, all of us rely on our defenses from time to time. We may lie to avoid sharing an uncomfortable truth about ourselves. We may hold a bizarrely strong opinion about something because it, it triggers a primitive wound or a primitive conflict. Common defenses include things like denial, rationalization, reaction formation, sublimation, and of course, what we're talking about, projection. My work as a therapist is to work with clients to push through these defenses and give people a safe space to dig deeper because the defenses are like walls we need to get through. Now, not all mental health practitioners fully ascribe to the concept of defenses, and I get that. But however you think of it, maybe you can think of them as ways of thinking. They are a way of protecting ourselves from that uncomfortable stuff that unsettles us psychologically and we don't really want to deal with. So if defenses are normal, when exactly do they become a problem? They become a problem when a person over relies on those defenses as a way of relating with the world, that these defenses, in essence, become the person's primary way of dealing with the world. Now let's go back to our narcissists. For narcissists who have such fragile, delicate egos, there is no way that they're going to allow that fragile core to get threatened. So for them, it's all defenses all the time. Projection 
is the most classical defense of the narcissist. And this is something that's been written about by the, in the granddaddies of the field, Freud and Kernberg and all of them. Now it makes sense because projection is deep and primitive, just like the insecurity and the ego vulnerability of the narcissist. Projection happens when a person projects an unacceptable thought or behavior or feeling or an uncomfortable conflict onto someone else. Now what you've got to keep in mind, and this is the tricky bit, this is not a conscious process. It's a bit like psychologically, again, throwing up, something I've talked about before, but it's like psychologically getting sick. Any one of you who's ever really, really gotten sick knows that there's nothing you could have done to hold it back. It just, it comes out of you and it happens quickly. And sadly, that's exactly how projection works. The ridiculous, awful, false, and confusing words and accusations come out and you look at these things that are coming at you confused. Like, you're saying, what? Huh? And when, but however, when you attempt to explain or defend or make sense of them, because it's unconscious for the person who's projecting onto you, they don't take ownership of, you, of it. And a person who's a narcissist will likely start gaslighting you or calling you crazy or paranoid or insane. Projection happens with every single narcissist out there. It's one of the things that's a universal. And it's a built-in part of the narcissistic pattern. Like I was referring to Freud before. Freud's, in Freud's early writings about narcissism, as well as the writings of other really famous narcissism theoreticians like Otto Kernberg, they really delve in into how important this idea of projection, this defense, is to understanding the narcissistic personality style. Now, do all of us sometimes engage in projection? Absolutely yes, all of us do it. All of us have those uncomfortable things, those uncomfortable conflicts deep in us that we do accuse other people of. And, though, and that defense and all those slips can take place at times when we feel vulnerable, anxious, or even just really fatigued. The goal of therapy, and particularly those kinds of therapies that focus on our early histories, is to resolve those unresolved background issues so we do less of stuff like projection. But for most of us, when we engage in projection, and someone points it out to us, we recognize that we may have hurt someone or that we may have confused them. And then we subsequently apologize and empathize with their confusion and, and just sort of how know, upsetting that might have been. Narcissists, however, don't engage in that kind of restorative work. They go on to their next favorite defense which is denial. And then, between denial and projection, they've just doubled their bets on everything in the whole universe of projection. Projection bothers us because it's so confusing. It doesn't feel good to have someone tell us we feel a certain way or did something or to have someone tell us that we have a certain intention. You're so jealous of me. I'm like, I'm, I'm not. And it feels worse when you can't have a conversation about the fact that being accused of something doesn't feel good. Now, if you don't know what projection is or that projection, that you're being subjected to it, then it all becomes even more confusing. Because if someone tells you that you are angry and you're actually having a perfectly good day, it can really feel like you've stepped into the twilight zone. But when you recognize that it's projection, then it can really make sense to you. And actually, this is the point at which projection, bizarrely enough, can actually be your friend, especially if you are managing a relationship with a narcissist. 
Remember that the narcissist is projecting that something that's very uncomfortable about themselves or something that they're feeling onto you. So if indeed their projection is inaccurate. And this is where you've got to be on, you know, honest, OK? So if there are times when a narcissist may say, hey, I think you're angry, and in fact, you are angry, it may in part be, yes, a projection, but it also may be true. So you've got to fess up when their projection and your reality actually line up. But when projection takes place, and it is patently inaccurate, then instead of gearing up to defend yourself to them or getting into an argument about how wrong they are, take a minute and pause. Pause, stop, and reflect that the thing that you're being accused of is actually reflective of their experience. So it tells you something. It's a piece of data about their inner world. If they're calling you angry, when you are absolutely not angry at all, then they are likely angry. When they accuse you of being jealous and you're not, they're the ones who are jealous. And this can actually be a bit of a useful parlor trick even beyond that. When they start accusing you of things that really may be very untrue, for example, they accuse you of infidelity or of cheating or micro-cheating or some kind of affair or lying, and you have noticed actually that it's their behavior that seems to be changing and maybe even veering in that direction, it may in fact be an indicator that they're doing the very thing, or at least thinking about the very thing, that they are accusing you of. Now, this idea of projection has definitely come into the public consciousness. For example, someone just saying conversationally, stop projecting your stuff onto me. Now, so many of us are aware of it when it is happening to us. We recognize that it's a projection, but it's really important to recognize that the projector, narcissist or not, is often actually unaware of what he or she is doing. So while it is annoying as hell, Talking about it serves no purpose. So it's important that you don't expend psychological energy trying to explain it and talk about it. Narcissists project to protect themselves, as is the case with all defense mechanism. It tends to be, though, their preferred defense mechanism. It protects the fragile and insecure ego from unacceptable and shameful stuff. So that stuff gets rejected and then projected on whoever is the person who is unfortunate enough to be closest to them or someone who's very significant and a bit of a lightning rod for them. Now, narcissists, because it's sort of this primitively dysfunctional personality style, they tend to over-rely on all of their defense mechanisms, not just projection. Projection just happens to be their favorite. They also have other very popular defense mechanisms, including denial, rationalization, and reaction formation. And reaction formation is when a person takes an overly impassioned or even angry stand about something because it is the opposite of their truth. The tendency of the narcissist to focus almost solely on appearances and superficial stuff is in line with protecting themselves. It doesn't matter to them. Like, it doesn't matter if my internal psychological world is a mess. As long as I portray a good, shiny image to the world, no one will ever know. For those of us experiencing it, it is very confusing to be in the face of projection until we know what it is. Then we are empowered to take the high road and see it as the defensive maneuver it is. Smile, a quiet smile within ourselves, as well as have a pang of pity for how fragile the narcissist is that they have to take those chaotic insides and put them outside. And then there is also the fact that we all sometimes engage in projection. All we can do is catch ourselves, apologize, 
remain mindful, remain aware, self-monitor ourselves, and always take a moment and attempt to restore trust and fix those ruptures when we are responsible for those things. Projection is confusing, projection is primitive, but when it happens, we know it. And then that idea that somebody is making accusations about our intentions or our behavior or our thoughts and feelings as though they're some kind of twisted fortune tellers and really hold to their guns that it's true. Don't engage. This is really a time to step back, nod politely, recognize what you're in the face of, and really save yourself a lot of trouble by not going into the fires there. Thank you again for tuning in. I hope this has clarified your understanding on projection. If you've ever been in a narcissistic relationship, this is the one term, the one pattern I guarantee that you have experienced. So as, as always, when you experience it now, you have a better idea of what to potentially do. Thanks again for tuning in. And if you're enjoying the content you're seeing, please hit the subscribe button or the bell and you will be informed of all of the content we have on this channel. Thanks again.